Hi, welcome to part 4 of our WinUAE installation guide. If you've been following the guide from the beginning, you found part 0, we discovered TransROM and we copied an A1200 ROM from an A1200 onto a disk. During this part, you may discover that you need TransROM later on to copy an A500 kickstart from an A500 into WinUAE via a disk. So please return to part 0 if you need to find out how to rip ROMs. In part 1 and part 2, we took a look at how to set up a hard drive via a hard file and we used a sample 4 meg partition. In this part 4, I am actually using an 800 meg hard file and we'll certainly need 800 meg in this chapter to install those games. In part 3, I introduced you to ADFs and Trans ADF to copy ADFs from the internet via a disk onto your Amiga or via ADF onto your WinUAE setup and from there we discovered how to copy the original workbench disks from our original workbench onto a disk and copy those via ADF onto our PC and at the end of all that we finally had a hard drive full of the original workbench disks in ADF format on our PC. In this part we will take a look at installing that workbench from our PC into our WinUAE package and to begin well I'm just doing a little housekeeping here snapshotting the workbench into that corner and if you've used our boot disk from part one or two then you will find this is where we left off a workbench installed well a partly workbench installed disk and to install the real workbench we will need to install all those workbench ADFs into our WinUAE package and by selecting all those disk drives in the floppy options panel we can select more than one disk inserted at once and you can see I have four disks inserted and the one that we really want is the install disk by clicking on the install it will come up with install options in the HD tools you will find a HD toolbox so if you don't have the HD toolbox for part two you'll find it on the workbench install disk but the directory, the drawer that we are really interested in is the install drawer and clicking on this will hopefully install Workbench to our newly formatted booted 800 meg partition disk unfortunately if you did use the boot disk you might come across a number of temporary drive errors and these are easily resolved and so we shall fix those errors by using our old friend the command line interface we can interface with the Amiga and tell it to assign ENV drive to anywhere we like in this case we will choose the RAM disk because temporary files are only small and the RAM disk in this case will hold that capacity and so if we click retry that will then continue with the install here we must choose our language and our printers to install but because we have no printers we will go for the British language and again it is requesting a temporary directory so let's assign T again to RAM it certainly won't hurt the RAM to assign a few temporary files in there and retry will continue with the install and so those are the only two things that we need to assign Basically, once we install Workbench, the startup sequence will be replaced with the Workbench startup and those assigns were basically from the boot disk where we really didn't need those temporary drives, those assigns to be made. So, here we go. This is now copying our Workbench from the install disk and from the Workbench disk all the way over. So, let's speed that process up. It is also encouraged to speed up your floppy emulation in WinUAE and that will speed up the installation process and we can select various floppy installation speeds from 800% and turbo and right down to the Amiga's original speed but in this example we are just speeding up the footage and it's asking for another disk so let's eject one of our disks from DFO and let's select the locale Unfortunately, we cannot have any more than those drives on our WinUAE package up to the press, but because the WinUAE package is being developed constantly, well, maybe that will change in the future. Up till this point, we can have four drives there, and, well, we have to make do with that. 
Again, let's eject the disk and install the extras disk so that we can continue the install. And again, because the install takes quite some time, I'm going to speed up this footage just a little bit to, well, get this over with. And yes, all those files and all those disks will be copied eventually onto our uh, newly partitioned Amiga drive. And they will overwrite any existing files. So in this case, the workbench is 3.1, which was a very stable release and is great for A1200 installations. I certainly would recommend 3.1. 3.9 is heavy on the CPU and the RAM, unless you have a power machine, and there really is no need to install 2.5 or 2.0 or 2.1 on any A1200 when 3.1 is available. So after the requester says that installation is complete, we can now eject all our disks from that drive and reset WinUAE. And for that, after a little while, there we go, the new workbench will load. And you notice the background there, the backdrop is on the, uh, well, let's just eject DFO and then that will appear. Okay, so the backdrop there can be quickly changed and we need to snapshot that in order for that to take effect. And I don't prefer the backdrop on there, so let's get rid of that. And so this is our new installation of Workbench. So let's rename that to Workbench. Workbench, there you go. And so, well, it's a bit of a mess at the moment. So let's clean that up quickly and easily with the cleanup option. And with a little time and effort, we can also clean up the rest of that drive so that, that makes things a little more presentable and we can snapshot our results by going through the window and snapshot all so let's resize our final effort and go up to window and select snapshot all there you go so that's our new workbench fully installed and all our programs are on there and the hd install programs are now in a directory of their own and so on to the next part. The next part is probably the most interesting part of them all. This is the WHD load installation. And basically all you need to do is copy one file into one directory and the WHD load is there. You'll find the installation files on the WHD load website there. And we can choose the small or the user package. It doesn't really matter. Let's choose the small and the user and save both of those to our hard drive. And just to show you, basically, they are basically the same package. And yes, we will only need the one file off these entire packages. So as long as we have that one file, then the rest of it should be easy enough. So now that we have those, we should have those on our hard drive somewhere. Let's find them. They should be in downloads. There you go. And let's just extract those to our PC hard drive so that we can select those and have those installed into win uae and you'll find exactly the same drive for both files there so it helps to rename one of those folders and then you can install the other one so the small version is called one and the user version is zero so let's extract the user version and so you'll find exactly the same files in there more or less and all these other files are basically superfluous. All we need is the WHD load file. There it is. That's the only file that we need from this package. Let's now return to our PC and select show PC drives from the CD hard drives tab in the settings. And then all our PC hard drives will be available through WinUAE and even a free mouse pointer there stuck in the center of the screen. But by selecting our PC hard drive there in the right window, and let's choose DHO in the left window. And for this, let's go into our downloads and find the WHD load file. So it doesn't matter which one of these we choose, because as I say, both installs will be virtually the same. So let's just select one or the other. And well, come on, it doesn't really matter. Let's choose the C directory in this case and let's get the WHD load file which must be copied to the C directory and I'm using an Amiga util to copy that across 
and so that just makes the job easier you can use the command line interface as long as you copy the whd load command into c then that is all you need to do personally i would recommend copying the full contents of c into c and s into s as you saw me do there and that will guarantee a complete installation in case we want to check we can select this command line interface and by tapping whd load there it is and so now that we have WHD load fully installed, or at least as installed as we need to at this point, now we need to find some games. There are at least two ways in which we can download games from the internet and install those on our WinUAE package. And I will show you both of those in this guide. The first way is to find the installation file from the WHD load website and by clicking on the installation of the game or the demo that you require you will then download that onto your pc and you can see by the red marks i've downloaded quite a few of those installations already let's just select one of those and in this case we'll be choosing uh, eagle rider or eagles riders there whatever that is supposed to be called and let's save that to our pc and i've never actually played that game before i'm just picking a game at random so now those files are on our PC, we can then extract those. Eagles Rider gets a full extract through WinZip or your favorite unarchive package. And that is the actual HD installation from WHD Load. And there you will find the slave, the install program and a number of icons to go with it. This is an installer to copy games from disk into WHD Load. The installer does not contain any games files usually it is basically the slave and the install and for this you'll need the original disc on an original Amiga so at this point if we had Eagles Rider on an original disc on our Amiga then we could install that and by double clicking on the install then we could install that no problem but because we do not have the original disc, we are choosing the second option, the second installation option to copy a game across into WinUAE is to use a package website called WH Download. And in WH Download, you'll find every Amiga conversion, which is a possible WHD load conversion, is available to download and well every as far as i know uh, maybe there are one or two there that aren't listed but eagles rider is certainly listed and on the wh download website you'll actually find more than just an installer you'll find the game pre-installed so if we find that on our hard drive we can extract that and what we will find in this archive is actually the complete game with the slave and the icons and all the files from the actual game which saves us installing the thing in the first place all we need to do is to copy those exact files across to our WinUAE partition or hard drive and they will be automatically installed without an installer so let's go ahead and try something like that for this we will find the Amiga Util from the boot disk still comes in handy and saves us using the command line interface so here we'll find the downloads directory that is the whd load installer package and so let's copy that across to our win uae package i'm actually going to copy both the installer and the complete install from our pc into win uae and for this i will make a directory on dho called games i can use the package which we are using at the moment we can continue to use the Amiga Util from the boot disk or we can use the command line interface. So let's quit this package and I'll show you how to do that using the command line. It's as simple as make directory DHO and in no time at all we have DHO games. And so we can now copy our packages into DHO games and we can either do that with a tool or we can do that through the workbench. Doing it through the workbench takes slightly longer because we will have to rely on icons to do that and we will have to find those icons on all the relevant disks. You can see here I'm also making, trying to make a directory there, DHL games which already exists, but yes we can also do that through the menu. 
Our PC drive is called storage and in here, well, there is an emulator's drive, but also in here there is an Amiga drive with our Amiga installation on there. And in here, if you remember, in downloads, we copied our Eagle Rider and the file there without the HD is actually the full installation. So let's copy the full installation across to DHO games just like that. And now, in a perfect world, we should be able to launch that from the icon from our DHO and that game should load and run perfectly fine. WHD load usually plays most games like this even though it is not registered but some games do require registration and some games do require an extra install step as we shall see a little later on. But you can see there by copying the WHD load file from our disk into C and well those few startup files don't make much difference but copying that thing into C and copying the full install from WH Downloads onto our drive gives us a game. Well, not quite yet. Let's turn down that volume and check this game out. I have no idea what this game will be like, but I have got an idea that we are actually on for 30 settings, so maybe this game will play a little fast. So the introduction to this game played pretty damn fast, so let's press any key and continue. This game is a 3D kind of 2.5D, shall I say, space battle simulator. And well, it ain't elite basically, but it is kind of a Galaga 3D kind of a clone. But well, it's very hard, and with the all 30 settings, it is quite boring actually. And we don't seem to be getting anywhere. So let's select F12, and that will bring up the options menu. From here, we can select cycle exact, and that should fix our problems. We can also change our CPU on the fly. But yes, cycle exact should be just what we need. So let's get back to this game and let's see if it plays any better. Well, you can see there it is smoother but slower already. And well, even this screen rip is not amazingly smooth. But you can see the aim of this game is to collect those gems and to fire the saucers and destroy the meteors in our way. We can do this in a virtual 3D environment and well we have to get to the end of the level by collecting all those diamonds and by destroying all the enemies. You can see the shields down there are on minimum and when we find an enemy it will switch to a different view and a different radar. But I don't really have much respect for that game, giving it a one time try, so I think that could have been done better. But there you go, Eagle's Rider. We also have the installation file and in here, well, we cannot run the installation file because we are unable to find the program installer and that installer is not found on the workbench installation. When we install the full workbench file, then the program installer will not be copied across, but that can be found on a workbench disk. Ironically, the file installer can be found on the install disk and Ironically, that's the only file from the entire Workbench archive that Workbench will not copy across during the install. So we have to do that manually. So let's select the installer disk and there it is, installer. And select C drive and just copy that over from the original Workbench install disk into C. And that's certainly an oversight on behalf of the Amiga programmers. Maybe they did copy the installer to a different drive, but I cannot find it. So in this case, we shall copy the installer to C, and there you go. By double clicking the icon there, that should install the Eagles Rider install to our hard drive. And in any partition that we like there, we can select even a PC partition if we should choose. But in this case, I'm selecting DHO games and that will not only install the slave, which means that that game will run with WHD load. It will also install its own icon. And then again, it will ask you for a disc. If you have the Eagles Rider disc on your Amiga and you are running this on an Amiga, now is the time to insert that 
and that will copy all those files onto your hard drive. If you have the ADFs, you can insert the ADF into the drive at that point, and some ADFs and some clean installs will work using that method, but sometimes if it's a crack, it will not work. It has to be the original game or the ADF of the original game. So you can see there, it has copied the Eagles Rider installer across, but because we do not have the original game, I cannot make full use of the installer. But again, yes, if you have the ADFs, you can try it, and sometimes that works. The final step to installing WHD load, it has to be said, is to buy the registration key. And this will mean WHD load runs faster and smoother, and it launches quicker, and it means you can get all the latest updates. So by selecting the payment option from the WHD load website, and we can use PayPal there to send payments to WHD load and once we've entered our details we should receive an email shortly well within a few hours sometimes within a day or so and contained within that email is the WHD load registration key and all we need to do is to download that from the email and insert that onto our PC so that we can retrieve that with WHD load and win UAE so now that we have that file, let's take a look at that on our hard drive. There it is, WHD load key. And all we need to do is to copy that into the S directory of our WinUAE package. So let's skip to WinUAE and back to our Amiga Util. This directory package just makes life easier to navigate. And let's select storage, which is our PC drive, and try to locate that file in our downloads. And there it is, WHD load key. And we need to copy that into the S directory of our WinUAE. So let's select that file, open S, and copy that across. And that basically is it. Now the WHD load package is now registered. So if you have WHD load and the key files, those are the only two files that you need to run games like Eagles Rider. And, well, that's the install, that's not going to work, might as well delete that, because we don't have the original disk. But the pre-installed version, and still runs, well, it would run if the path was correct. And to change the path, we just need to put C in the icon info there, and save that up, and that will find WHD load in C. And here we go, that package is now loading, and there is hardly a delay now loading that game, and so that loads quickly and easily just like that but there are some games just a few which require the original a500 rom to be present on your machine one of those is magic johnson's basketball so if we download that game from the wh download site then we will have a pre-installed version the next step is to return to our aminet archive and find the s kick file and the latest version of S-Kick is what we require. So if we search for that S-Kick 346 there, that's the only version present, and that's the version that we need. So if we download that, that will contain a few files that we need to get that game running. Now that we have those files, let's inspect those on our PC, and there you go, Magic Johnson's Basketball. Let's extract that, and we also need S-Kick LHA as well, so let's extract that, and yes, this on archive will extract LHAs as well as zips, and you'll find that extracts to the main directory there. And well, the kickstarts directory is the only one that we require from the S kick, and as long as we have the kickstarts, then we are away to go. And we will require an extra little download later on, and it's probably the most important download of them all the actual A500 kickstart ROM. But for the moment, we have everything we need for the pre-install. And this time, to find those, I will actually use the icons. And by showing all icons there, we can show all the drawers and all the drives on our PC. And in our storage directory there, in our storage drive, we will find Amiga. And in there, we download the things into the downloads directory. So yes, we can use icons as well to drag things across and you may notice magic johnson's basketball we extracted that 
and that is a pre-installed program so all we need to do is to drag that across onto our Amiga drive and run it unfortunately it complains that we still require the A500 kickstart and the devs kickstart file kick34005 there we still require it so luckily we've just downloaded that in our skick archive so if we return to our storage and our Amiga downloads we will find the skick has been extracted in there and it's the kickstarts directory that we require and that needs to be copied into devs devs is on our workbench main drive there so as long as kickstarts goes into devs there that will find the file it requires and so all the kickstarts are there if we have all the kickstarts available we will require the actual kickstart rom and the master header file which this basically sets up the rom and enables the amiga to read it so now that we have those files just the small matter of gaining the rom if you remember from part zero we extracted our a1200 rom from our amiga 1200 and so we should have that there it is kick rom we should have that in our win uae archive so if we copy that across from win uae roms there we can use that and that is actually the authentic amiga 1200 rom so if we actually rename that and give it the actual authentic amiga 1200 rom label which it requires which you can now see on screen what you have to do is type that in for the amiga 1200 kickstart rom and that will mean it is recognized in your setup so there you go kick and then the actual registration code followed by a1200 there and if we inspect that by scrolling down you will now find the a1200 rom and the setup files are there in our configuration there are also a number of extra files with the skick archive and so it helps to copy those extra files across it isn't vital but i'd recommend it anyway so if we return to our skick we'll find allo kick there that's an extra file and we'll find uh, another one there uh, the kickstart that's another file we don't really need the doc but the kickstart file we do need so let's copy those across and well those files in the same directory they seem to work and so that's the full installation of skick all we need to do is to find the amiga 500 rom and if you remember from part zero we can rip an amiga 500 rom from an amiga but i happen to have an installation of workbench here with all the roms present so i will simply use my kickstart rom that i've ripped already the amiga 500 rom is 256 or in this case 262 kilobytes long and if we copy that across then we just give that a capital a there if we copy that across uh, that will copy and that is the file that we need finally to run magic johnson's basketball that 256 file is exactly the same if you look at the both kickstart revisions there this is exactly the same file size and you can see the amiga 3000 there is actually a 512k rom but yes if we copy or clone that rom and give it the appropriate label that will work so i'm just going to copy that but that is exactly the same rom with two different labels and our amiga 1200 rom there it is that we ripped from our Amiga 1200. So yes, if you have an available Amiga 500, or by any other means, if you can get that Amiga 500 ROM, give it that label, and that's all we need to run the game. The Amiga 1200 ROM there, while well, I haven't noticed any games that actually require the Amiga 1200 ROM, only the Amiga 500 ROM seems to be the one which causes the problems. But luckily there are very few games uh, the WHD load which actually require the ROM and so well let's check that game out well I'm not quite sure whether that effect on the title screen is a crash or whether it's meant to do that let's check out the game itself and as you can see it's a pretty terrible rendition of basketball to a side there the crowd moves and we can hear the crowd chants but the only other sound effects is the bounce of 
quite flat basketball and well I don't really know how to control this game because I've never actually seen it before the guys running around the screen look pretty authentic but I can't rate this game it looks pretty terrible and the guy running along the bottom of the screen looks like somebody from Mission Impossible running up and down there but apart from that well pretty average game but that's how you get all those A500 only installs working but let's return to the matter of installing a game from an ADF using the actual WHD load installer and for this example I'm actually going to use the most relevant example of them all we are going to install Putty Squad so if we grab the installer from WHD.de and also remember to visit system3.com and grab the actual game which was released on Christmas Day 2013 that's the installer and that's the game so first of all let's extract the installer and that should contain the slave and the install and now if we extract the game we'll actually find two ADFs and the documentation there for the game and so we'll need those ADFs and the installer to install this game uh, we will not require the A1200 or the Amiga 500 ROM to play this game so once again we just need the WHD load command in C so let's open up our Amiga again and use our quick boot disk util to check that game out and install it on our Amiga and we can use the icons as I showed you before to locate those on our PC and if we are using a real Amiga right now well you'll have to copy those over using zips and 720k discs or a flash media drive if you have one of those flash media certainly works but all we have to do if you are using WinUAE is to copy the installer across and we are going to move that into our games directory and those ADFs well we'll have to insert those ADFs into WinUAE by pressing F12 and we return to our floppy disks menu we can now insert those disks and I'm going to insert the first disk into DFO and just select that there from where we found that in our downloads and I'm actually going to insert the second ADF into DF1 but usually installers require all disks to be inserted into DFO so that will not work but that's both of the Putty Squad disks inserted into our machine and you can see they're NDOS both of those aren't in DOS format but both disks are there so now we can go ahead and run the installer if you remember we copied the installer over from our PC onto our Amiga unfortunately we forgot to copy the .info file which is actually the icon in the Amiga file system so now if we return to our PC we can drag one of those info files across we can yes we can clone an existing info file and that will work but I will actually copy the actual info file across from our PC and typing that in manually there takes some time but yes that info file is necessary for that to appear on our Amiga so don't forget that and so I will be showing you all the mistakes that I made in this installation basically to save you the trouble of making those yourself so if everything went plain and smooth on this installation perhaps you wouldn't learn half of the bug fixes that you might have to do instead of getting yourself into trouble but there you go by refreshing that screen the icon appears and again it says not a DOS disk in DF1 that's fine we know that isn't a DOS disk anyway and we can continue the install unfortunately the version of the installer program that we copied from the install disk is too old and that will not be compatible with this installer and that will not install the game onto our hard drive so if we proceed we will gain an error so what can you do well yet again we shall return to our aminet archives and on the aminet you will find the latest version of the installer available as version 43 so if we type installer in there and do a search that should appear and there should only be one installer there and that's quite low down on that screen but let's see if we can find it there it is installer version 43.3 so if we grab that 
and extract that onto our PC. We can then copy that over using our Amiga and our favorite Amiga Util. We can then copy that installer and extract that onto our PC. And there it is, that's the LHA and that um, is the extraction at the top of the screen there. So if we now copy installer, the updated version 43 installer into C, copy that command into C, we will have a new installer command and that is actually compatible with this game. So finally, now that we have a fairly latest installer package, it will still complain about DF1, but we are not too concerned about that. And yes, 43.3, we have version 43.3. It actually recommends that there are even later versions that are available in Workbench 3.5 and Workbench 3.9, but 43 works for now, so that's all we need to know, and we can proceed. As soon as we close this dialog box, we will be presented by a drive install option. And for this, let's select DHO games. And that's our usual install, and that's the default install in this case. It will ask us for an icon, so let's select that. And the drive in this case is DFO. We can select DF1 if we have the original disk inserted in DF1, but let's stick to DFO for this, and that should make the job much easier. Let's skip on through the install process, and that will take time, but we can once again speed up the disk up to 800% and that will turbocharge that install and make that load on WinUAE much easier. And now it's inserting the second disk time. So once again, let's press F12 and bring up the menu and let's eject the disk from DFO and let's insert the second disk, disk 2, into DFO and so that it doesn't get confused. Let's insert that into the same drive and we can, well, that will appear in the background somewhere and given enough time to do that, we can press start and that will install. After both disks have finished, you'll gain a prompt which says installation complete. Well done, your game is now on your hard drive. We can now delete the installer because we've no need to run that again. The installed package is now on our PC or on our Amiga. So there it is. And if we check out the information, if we give the WHD load command a direct path into C, that tells it it is there. And I like to add a number of other options as well. If you are using an O30 card or an O30 CPU, then sometimes adding the no cache and the no MMU option helps and certainly saves that from crashing sometimes but we are actually using Amiga 1200 all 20 CPU for this so that means the game should work and we've installed the key don't forget so that pops up straight away with my name the full key and that loads so it's been a long time since I've checked this game out and so yes it is working let's see how we go on Putty Squad was not released on the Amiga and it is now December 2013 and System 3 have only just got around to bug fixing their game and to release it. They said there was absolutely no point to release this at the time even though as you can see these amazing 32 colour backgrounds really stand out and maybe even 64 colours there with the fade effect. The copper backgrounds there, fantastic. But in this game, what we have to do is to rescue a number of soldiers, a number of blobs, and we can also pick up things by pulling down on the controller, and that picks up some nitro, which we can use to blow away those frogs that you've just seen me avoiding. By pulling down on the stick and pulling left and right, we can choose from the options that we have, the collected options that we have available, and one of those options is actually to summon this guy. We can actually bounce on his stomach to get to higher platforms and he will blow things up for us as well. So we can call the cat creature with the fish there and we have virtually infinite nitros to blow away anything else. But you saw that red blob there, if we should melt into that guy then that picks up one of those guys. And we have five guys to rescue on that level. So thank you once again and I'll see you in the next part.